Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, let's see, people in the chat, hi. Screen name taken, Keldingle, Crescent Throne, Lucy, Amanda Jones, Crystal Fear, nice to see you guys here. Um, I never tweeted it out, so give me a second. Um, I guess I could do that for my desktop a little bit more efficiently. Thank you guys for being patient with me today. Uh. All right. It's out. My tweet is out there in the world. Uh, hey, Artful Jackalope, welcome. I'm sorry that you're not feeling well, but at least we can hopefully be company, provide some company for you. Uh, so this is what we're working on today. Uh, this is the like um, off-brand Arwen pattern. Well, it's by simplicity. It's just not like an actual uh, Lord of the Rings like official pattern, but it absolutely is an Arwen pattern, <laughs> if you look at it. Um, so yeah, this dress in particular looks like a lot of the dresses that she wears in the in all three of the movies. Um, the one that we're gonna base our work off of today is this one. Um, this is View A, uh, because it has that correct style of collar. Um, this is a pretty loose resemblance to what the actual costume is that I'm trying to make. So the purpose of the mock-up is to just create a pattern to work with, to create a basic, like the, the same general shape and then be able to make the alterations that we need to. So um, just off the top of my head, that's gonna have to include um, making it a front closure instead of a back closure because this dress does zip up the back, I believe. Um, changing the shape of the sleeves a little bit um, and changing the shape of the hemline because it's more of like a petal kind of shape uh, rather than being a straight dress. Uh, and it's also open. She wears leggings, but the dress itself, it's its like a long dress, but it doesn't actually, like it's pretty much open from the waist down. So she's got leggings on underneath and it's layered. Um, and so it's usually like hanging in a way where it looks like a normal dress, but it's actually like, a, more like a tunic with leggings, I guess. Anyway, that's what we're working on. I already started cutting some of my pattern pieces, and so I'm like maybe halfway done with that. Um, just working on that yesterday and didn't get it quite as far as I wanted to, so um, I'm just gonna pick up from where I left off and just be stitching today. And thank you guys for being here to keep me company. It'll hopefully make my work go faster. Uh. Um, this is what I'm using to make it out of. Oh, I need to move my camera. There we go. And I can see how much stuff has accumulated <laughs> on my sewing machines. Hey, within one tiger. Hi, shadow nymph. Will I, um, will I be showing you how to line the gown? Um, not on this particular stream, and in fact, uh, that's another difference between this pattern that we're working with and the final Arwen dress, is that um, Arwen's actually wearing two layers. She has, um, I wish I had printed out a reference image. I guess I could add one to the screen. That never really fits very well, though. Um, basically, she has a silk underdress and then the exterior dress, which is suede. So, um, what I'm planning to do is just treat them separately. I'm gonna end up using this one. I'll bring it over here for now. Um, to treat them separately, sorry, I'm like walking around and talking at the same time. Uh, but basically, that the 
silk dress that goes underneath will be will serve as the lining but it will be a separate piece and then the suede dress on the outside will not be lined just because it's not lined i think they used real suede on her costume and you can see on the inside of the sleeves and the edge of the sleeves that it's unfinished so i'm just going to try to replicate what they did with that um, and do mine the same way all right So this is just a bolt of muslin, a high raven in the, in the rowan. So yesterday, oh no. Okay, good, that's something underneath. Yesterday I was working on this and I was spreading out my fabric and I felt like weird lumps underneath and I checked underneath the fabric and there was nothing there. And then I looked between the layers of the fabric and found a dead cricket. <laughs> like the cricket had been folded up in the fabric in the factory when it was made, or when it was like wrapped onto the bolt at least. And so that was pretty horrifying. And I did not expect or want to find a dead cricket in my fabric, but you know, sometimes things don't go the way you want them to. Here's one of our larger pattern pieces. I'm gonna lay it out so that the wider portion of the skirt is uh, toward the cut edge of that. So I'm working on a cutting mat. Um, this giant cutting mat I just got from Joanne. Um, but you can buy them online or wherever. A lot of craft stores sell that kind of thing. I'm also using pattern weights. Instead of pinning everything, which takes a really long time and then creates distortions in the surface of the fabric, I'm just laying some weights down on top of this, um, which is a really simple way to keep everything from moving around. Uh, while you're trying to cut things and it makes it a lot faster to cut things out. Artful Jackalope says, my cats would have been all over that, talking about the dead cricket, I assume. Man, this thing had been dead for a while. <laughs> I don't know how long I've had this bolt, but it's been like at least some months. Like, I don't, um, I haven't been using this for recent mock-ups because I've needed like thicker fabric. Anyway. It was gross. I actually just like cut out that whole chunk of fabric and just threw it away. I was like, I don't even want to try to salvage this. I'm not using the Cricut fabric. All right, we're getting close to the end of my table. Unfortunately, part of my table is taken up by my computer monitor. Hey, thank you to Evil Crash for gifting a sub to Crescent Thorn. Thank you both kind of you. Oh no, Fusil Poost says they ordered a pillow once and there was a dead spider in the plastic bag it came in. That's horrifying. I would be really upset. Okay, now I'm going to be using a rotary cutter, the pizza cutter of the fabric world. and just cutting along the lines. So if you're working with a commercial pattern at home, one of the first things you need to determine is what size you need. Um, and keep in mind that sewing pattern sizes are not the same as finished clothing sizes that you buy at the store. Like if I were to go to the mall and search for a dress for myself, I would start looking at about like size six is what my normal dress size would be. But the number on the pattern that we're assembling for this Arwen dress is size 12, literally double. Um, so it's just like a totally different scale. It is not the same as finished clothing. So keep that in mind. Um, you can look at the measurements that are listed on the pattern itself in order to determine what size you need.
Oh, hey, Triforce nerd, welcome back. Oh my gosh, within one tiger in the chat is telling you a story about someone who got a slug in their salad. That's horrifying. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Yes, this pizza cutter, <laughs> well, this rotary cutter is very, very sharp. So it's just like a spinning blade, essentially. There you go. Hey, Tiffy to Squirrel. Um, Shadow Nymph is asking, how did I learn all to do all the cosplay skills? Um, a combination of the internet and um, working with people who are better than me for the most part. Um, I did go to school for theatrical design, but for the most part I learned what I know about sewing outside of school. Um, lots of practice, lots of reading internet tutorials, and um, you know, just trying to enrich myself where I can. Learning from other people too. I had an internship, um, but it's been a big combination of things. Like ultimately, to reach the upper levels of any kind of skill, you need to get your education from many, many sources and kind of synthesize your own information. So that's why that question is like weirdly hard for me to answer because it's like, well, I did this and that, and I. I searched out educational opportunities wherever I could find them, but it wasn't like any one source like, oh, this was all just given to me or handed to me. Um, you know, I didn't go learn it any one particular place. I just kept working at something that I wanted for a long time. this farther down without disturbing anything. There we go. Okay, everything is still pretty much lined up, which is good. Oh, hey, Milieu, welcome. And hey, Alpha Greed, glad to see you guys here. It's been kind of a weird day for me, so I apologize for not being super talkative. Um, I'm kind of low energy, but I needed to get some work done, and I thought it would be nice to have company, so even if this isn't as, like, instructional as some of my streams are, I hope you enjoyed it, and thank you for being here to chill with me. careful to keep your fingers away from the path of the blade because it's very easy to cut yourself, uh, which I totally have done before. Um, so just a warning. Oh, Shadow Nymph is working on TP Zelda? That's awesome. Good luck with your costume. Within One Tiger is Growing their menagerie from chickens to also include a beagle and an orange tabby. That's pretty awesome. I'm always for more animals in the household, especially when you have a small farm to run. Uh, thanks, Raven in the Rowan. I appreciate that. I'm just going to fold up and set aside. Grab the next one. Well, thank 
you, Alpha Greed. I'm glad you liked that costume. Oh, I've been going through kind of a hard time lately. Some positive vibes and some chill vibes. All right. Now this piece needs to be cut on the fold, which is right where I'm standing. Uh, luckily, we have a nice triangle. See, I'm glad I didn't cut off this whole tail. <laughs> um, so I can scoot this down a little bit and make it easier for you guys to see all of it or most of it. Okay, um, as you can see, there's lots of different lines here that represent different sizes. And one thing that I do to help make sure that I always cut along the right line, uh, I don't always do this, but I do it when I feel like I need to uh, or when it's useful. This is just a highlighter and I'm just going to highlight the line that I want to cut so that when I get down to this edge, I don't just like automatically, I don't just like pick the wrong one if I'm cutting on autopilot or something. So these bolts um, come folded, so I'm basically cutting two pieces at once. And this is the folded edge. Um, So I'm lining this up, um, this piece is the, the sleeve and so it's a symmetrical piece and so it designates to cut it along the fold and so I need to cut this same piece twice to get two sleeves um, rather than just cutting it once and then resulting in two pieces because each piece that I cut is only a single sleeve as opposed to all of the other dress parts. Pink Thorn, welcome. Nice to see you all here. It really does cheer me up to see some familiar faces. Jared also happens to be out of town right now. Um, he's at the Magic the Gathering pre-release thing. Ready, ready, loading, ready, run. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, and so that's what he did yesterday, and he's still out in Canada for the rest of this weekend. So. Having company on Twitch is really nice. Thank you, Tiffy the Squirrel, for the good vibes. I appreciate that.
Oh, thank you, uh, Selenari. It says they like my sweater. I like this sweater too, and in fact, I bought it at a thrift store the other day. I get a lot of my clothing that way. I find it's easier. Well, I don't know. It's more fun to search for things like that. Hey, Jerrica. What kind of fabric is this? This is um, muslin. It's a type of cotton that's just like a plain, um, thin, cheap fabric. And um, it's actually very cheap. And so the idea is that you use it to kind of create a copy of the thing that you want to make. And that way you can test out your pattern, make sure it fits you, uh, make adjustments, and, and change the fit if you need to. Uh, all with this fabric before you cut into your final fabric. And so you figure out um, you know, what, you, what your final pattern needs to look like and then you make it an exact copy out of your final fabric and it's perfect the first time. Um, that's the theory anyway, it usually works out pretty well. So I'm gonna set this piece aside for now because I know I need to cut another identical piece, uh, but I have one other large dress piece to cut first. And I kind of want to see, I kind of want to mess with the layout on the fabric, so let's do that. might actually be a good time to cut the other sleeve. If I flip it over and put it over right here. just slightly to make it fit along the width that this will work. Elixir asked, how do you balance between the fabric being high quality enough to do what you want and not so expensive it's wasteful for a costume you won't wear much? Um, I guess to be honest, I'm usually one who just continues to spring for quality because I want that to be a hallmark of my work. So that's kind of, in my opinion, a higher priority than, oh, am I really wearing this enough to get, get my money's worth, so to speak, air quotes. Um, so that's a per like that's gonna be a personal choice for every single person. I generally decide to prioritize quality of the fabric because to me creating that sort of like um, that overall effect of having just like very rich fine materials is the end goal of all of my costumes. So if you don't feel that way about your costumes then I would say, work with whatever you want to work with. Like, there's not um, a wrong fabric um, to use or a, a right fabric for every situation. It's ultimately like what works for your project. And so I'm sorry that that's like a really vague answer, but like I just recognize that my own standards are not like the same as everybody else. And so that's why I feel like I shouldn't be advising people like, oh, you need to get the best thing that you can. Because just because that's what I would do does not mean it's the best thing for everyone to do. Artful Jackalope, thank you so much. 
saying, woo, seven month sub just went through. Thanks for all your lovely chill streams and friendliness. I appreciate that, Artful Jackalope. Thanks for the resub. Um, Crystal Fear, is, uh, Thrift Stores, yes, sorry. Uh, someone else had a question. Selamari is asking, is there a fabric you recommend as a test fabric for making bodysuits? I would say that any type of stretchy fabric that has a similar amount of stretch to your final fabric is the right fabric to use. Um, and so there's, again, not a standard, but different bodysuits have different amounts of stretchiness. Sometimes you're using a, like a, uh, what am I talking about? Sometimes you're using a spandex that is really stretchy and you have a lot of um, stretch to work with and sometimes it's like a pleather that's really tight and there's not a lot of stretch. So either one of those fabrics should work uh, fine depending on how you pattern it, but using a mock-up fabric that is similar in stretchiness to the final fabric is, is the right answer. So just find something that's similar. Uh, Maker Geek is asking if I'm using the muslin to make the make a mock-up. Um, do I stitch it away, stitch it together in a way that makes it easier to take apart later? No, not really. I mean, you can use a slightly larger stitching length that makes it easier to like rip the seams later, but um, the difference is pretty minimal. So I don't, I don't really do that very uh, intentionally. I just kind of sew it. <laughs> Uh, Pinkthorn is answering, yeah, pretty sure you just base the mock up together. That's certainly one way to do it. I generally just kind of use whatever standard stitch length, but you can do um, a longer stitch length to make it a little bit faster to rip apart. Oh, hey there, Evil Ted. Welcome. We're cutting fabric pieces today. Uh, I think I'm going to go with my instincts and not cut these the way that they're laid out right now, though. I'm going to cut them like this. Um, so there are arrows on the pattern pieces that need to line up with the direction of the fabric. Oh, no. I'll, I'll flip it back over this other way, at least. So that way I can use this section I hope it's laid out along the fold for my other piece. That's the goal anyway. This was kind of flipped around from how we had it earlier, but I think this will be easier. Uh, Shadow Nymph is asking, did I line my Zelda gown? Yes, I did. Um, I lined it in a specific way that's called flat lining. Um, which is where instead of sewing an outside of like the fashion fabric together and then the lining together separately and then putting them together, you line the pieces of the lining, or you sew the pieces of the lining directly to the pieces of the exterior fabric. And uh, the difference that that makes is that then uh, all of the panels are like stronger than they would be because they're all two layers than they would be ordinarily. Um, so every piece has the silk exterior, and um, in my case, it was like a what fabric was that? It was like a broadcloth um, underlining, and that meant that all of the silk had more structure than it would have ordinarily because it was backed with a stronger fabric. So that's how I did that one. Um, you could probably still do a separate lining, but it was starting to be lots and lots of layers of fabric because it had an overlay that was lined and then the main dress underneath and then a corselet under that. And so I was just getting concerned that there's too much fabric and too many layers and it would be too bulky and too heavy. So I decided not to do, um, I decided not to do a separate lining the way that I normally would. Uh, Alpha Greed, yes, they're weights. They're little little fabric weights. Um, you can do this by pinning the fabric down. I'm sorry, pinning the pattern down to the fabric. But I think that takes longer and it also creates more distortion and that it's like a bumpy surface where the pins are um, kind of interfering with it laying totally flat. And so I prefer to use these. They're just like little, I don't even know what they're made out of. Um, heavy little weights. Yeah, I don't know. The mod, the auto mod is like holding weird comments and making me like say, "Can is this okay?" 
And you guys are being totally respectful and polite, and I don't know why the auto mod just is not chill today. Once again, I'm just highlighting um, the size that I want to cut so that I don't forget and cut the wrong line. You can use like a transfer method to copy the, the lines of the pattern straight onto the fabric. And in doing that, you can avoid cutting off like all of the extra sizes. Because I'm going to cut, um, the sizes on this pattern are 10 is the smallest size and 18 is the largest size. I'm cutting a size 12, which is like the second smallest size. And so when I cut that size, all of these other lines are going to be gone. I'm going to throw them away. Um, if I really wanted to save this pattern and use it to make other sizes later, I could use a transfer method to um, like trace the lines onto the fabric and then only cut the fabric and not cut through the pattern, which is something that we used to do when I was working in college theater because you're making lots of different clothing for lots of different actors and actresses and they need lots of different sizes. So you want to keep everything reusable as much as possible. Um, but I don't have to do that anymore because I only make costumes for myself. And if my size ever changes to the point where I need to go and buy another pattern, then they're not that expensive. <laughs> All right, here we go. I like that crisp, crisp sound of the rotary cutter sliding through the paper pattern. It's very satisfying like biting into something crunchy. I'm kind of cutting this starting in weird places because I'm right-handed and I don't want to be working away from the camera. So that's why I'm like starting in the middle back here and then working my way towards you guys. Uh, when I'm by myself and not trying to also think about keeping everything I'm doing really visible, then I just kind of cut in whichever direction makes the most sense to me. Uh, there's not a right way or a wrong way to approach it, just you want to make sure that your pieces are nice and flat and consistent as you go. Pink Thorn, finding that mock-up fabric, that's good. It's always really satisfying when you find something that you know is just right for your project. Well, I'm gonna have to line that back up, but that's fine. <laughs> this is just the mock-up, so it doesn't have to be like well, once we start going with it, we want it to be highly accurate, but in the sense that this pattern is just a starting place, um, and I'm sure that there are going to be lots of changes that I need to make to it in order to fit it to me properly, um, so I'm not too worried about, like, little things yet. Thank you. 
I'm struggling because I'm right at the end of my table. I'm gonna pull this up a little bit farther. Much better. Okay, now that's laying flat the way it's supposed to. How can people cut that straight? It says Oofy99. You just uh, gotta practice with it. Many hours, many hours of cutting exactly like this. Um, you end up feeling a lot more confident with your tools. is asking, do I like Game of Thrones? I do like Game of Thrones quite a bit. Um, been diligently watching since season one. Still not cosplay from that show though. I don't really cosplay from a lot of live action stuff. I mainly cosplay, well I say that as I'm making a costume from a movie. Um, but I guess there's, there's not really any hard rules about what I do or don't cosplay. I'm generally less interested, but this one in particular caught my eye, so. Sometimes it happens. Uh, within one tiger, uh, if I can correctly remember how to permit you, then yes. Yay, yes, there's your permission. I did it correctly. I'm bad at Twitch still. <laughs> okay, so um, she just posted a link to a similar rotary cutter to this one, but it's smaller. Um, like, I think the blade size is just smaller. Uh, those are pretty useful, especially when you're going around tight curves, because uh, having a larger blade can make it difficult to like uh, move it in really tight circles. So yeah, thanks for sharing that within one tiger. A useful little tool.
last piece of all of this. I now have all of my pieces cut, which is pretty exciting. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my pattern weights aside. There they are, that's what they look like. <laughs> you can see them up close. Put these sleeves back, let them hang out together. And then I will pick up my dress pieces. So now I have in this pile everything that makes the main body of the dress. Let me arrange this slightly. Okay, so as I mentioned before we got started, center this up again. Sorry, I'm, my camera angles are weird. designed to have like a center back zipper, I believe, and I need it to open in the center front instead. So rather than treat this separately, I'm gonna sew it straight up the back. Um, even though that's not what the pattern instructions want me to do, it's what I wanna do. <laughs> I just want to make sure that I have my waistline marked on all of these pieces and line it up from there. So I think that's a little bit safer, um, kind of as a registration point, than the top or the bottom, which will be changing. Yeah, I also like routinely ignore um, a lot of pattern markings because um, ultimately, I want things where I put them and not where this pattern has put them. So I'll set that aside for now. almost see my face when I'm sitting here. Let's adjust that. There we go. That's a little more of a face cam, right? Let's sit back to you. There we go. Oh, my angles are so weird. I've got this one like a little arm. It's just hard to adjust. I've got all these unintentional Dutch angles here. Sorry for the camera bounce. Okay, that's a little better.
So these are wonder clips. There they are. Uh, little plastic clips that I'm going to be using today in place of pins. Um, they're a little bit easier to work with than pins, in my opinion. Sorry, that was stupid. All right, I like to do things in batches, so I cut everything at once and then pin or clip everything at once and then, or like as many seams as I can at one time and then sew. Oh my gosh, now everyone is filling the chat with awful puns, truly the worst. Right. So I'm just gonna let this guy hang out. And I can also fold this up and probably put it away. I don't think I'll need to reference the pattern again. Um, because I'm just using this as a jumping off point to create my own pattern. I'm not really worried about referencing the instructions for how uh, Simplicity Patterns wants you to construct this particular dress. That doesn't really matter to me. I just wanted like the same general shape um, to create my own dress and then I do care about how that one fits me and how it goes together and making sure that it's correct. Um, but this one is not, it doesn't have to be, and so I don't have to worry about making it right. pattern shape but I'm still going to do what it's telling me to do and then I'll make alterations once I am uh, ready to put the whole thing together. side back um, which is going to connect to the side front and the back, the center back. I'm basically going to work on the center front and the center back first. Which is here. So I wasn't thinking about this too hard when I cut it, but um, I cut this on the fold which is what it tells you to do. Um, and but we're flipping it up. We are um, making the back, the back is sewn together and then the front becomes the opening. So I actually need to cut this piece open. <laughs> uh, well, wait a second. That is correct. 
I don't know, I might need to reference the instructions a little bit after all to see which way these pattern pieces are supposed to fit together. Ah, uh, but that's fine. I can go ahead and cut this open for now. I'm just placing my scissors right in this fold and just cutting. So I gotta be careful to make sure that I maintain my line. Okay, I might actually flip this over. SG just resubbed for seven months. Thank you so much. Nice to have you back. And we're almost done cutting through. There we go. So now the front is opening rather than the back. Probably not going to do a very long stream today. I know I've only been going for like an hour-ish. I've just... I just have a lot on my mind right now.
sure I do this symmetrically. So these are the two center front panels. I'm going to flip one of them over so that I can make sure that the uh, side panels get lined up correctly. So these need to also be separated. Sorry, I just whacked the camera with these scissors. outside. Um, it rains a lot here, but it doesn't usually rain very hard. It's usually like a really fine mist or sprinkling. So this is kind of weirdly out of character for the weather. in the chat is talking about eating pho, some Vietnamese soup, and honestly you're making me hungry.
All right, everybody. Um, I pinned a lot of my main panels together, but I think I'm going to end up calling it a day. Oh, hi, Piano Sammy. Sorry to see that you're just showing up for this while I'm, I'm going to have to end the stream. I'm really sorry. Um, I think I'm going to go try to get some food or something. Um, thank you guys for joining me today. And um, I'll try to get back to streaming more soon. All right. Uh, I guess I'll see you guys later. Bye.